guys and welcome back to the Alaska Man Cave. Well, the other day I had my solvent tank sitting on a set of sawhorses and I needed to move it out of the way and as I was trying to drag the sawhorses around, of course, it happened. It all tumbled off onto the floor and it landed right on the valve, of course, which then broke at the threads. So I have to fix the solvent tank or I need to fab up a new one. And so I decided that with, though my, my solvent tank works great and it's, but one thing I have been frustrated with, it's not quite wide enough. So anytime I try to put an AR lower receiver in there, it doesn't want to lay flat on the bottom. I have to put it in at an angle and, and then add more acetone to make sure it's completely covered up. So I think what I want to do is I want to make uh, my solvent tank at least six inches wide and then I also want to extend it out to about four foot long. So, and along with this whole problem, I've always had an issue with where to put it. I don't really have the, the wall space to set up a whole area where I can set the solvent tank up against the wall. I came up with an idea that I think is going to work great. So let me show you what we got. I've got an eight inch deep lip on my workbench and that's two by four underneath. So that's three and a half inches. So I can put uh, a set of drawer sliders on there right underneath that two by four and my tank will be able to slide right underneath the, the, the edge of my, my workbench. So whenever I need it, I'll just be able to roll it out on the rollers from the table. So the solvent tank will sit like right in this area. I'll be able to pull the lid off, work my parts, put my lid back on, and then push it back underneath the table. So I think that's going to work out really, really good. And so we've just bought, these were, what, $13 at Lowe's, 100 pound capacity. So I kind of figured out roughly my acetone 6.6 .6 pounds per cubic foot, and I'm going to be putting approximately four and a half to five cubic feet into my tank, plus the weight of the material. So I'll be looking at about 50 pounds. So we're nowhere near the capacity of those roller slides. One thing I never really liked that much about this tank is having the valve come straight out. So when I go to drain it, I'm gonna go ahead and put the nipple off the end just like it was with a 90 and a valve, and then I can put whatever length nipple I need so I can uh, just hold up a, a can of acetone underneath to catch it all and open my valve. I think that'll be a heck of a lot easier than having it stick straight out and then trying to trying to have it pour into into a can. So I'm going to use the 16th plate. I'm going to use some eighth by half angle, and we're going to fab up the box. Uh, we use the the angle to make the lip for our lid. And we may also run some angle around our box just to stiffen up the sides in case it wants to bow too, too much. So let's get started. I'm going to start laying out some plate. We're going to take it and I think the easiest way to cut it since it's 16 inch plate, we'll, we're not going to pull out the torch for that. It'd just be a pain and it would warp quite a bit. So we're going to take a cutoff wheel. We'll lay out a line and we should be able to cut pretty straight with that. And then that'll leave us a nice corner to corner fit up that we can run some hard wire on. Anyway, well, enough talking, let's get to business. I decided to make it six inches deep. So we're just going to lay out our line. Guys, anytime you're going to use a grinder or be creating metal particles, Make sure you use some eye protection. Um, I don't know if anybody's had any metal drilled out of their eyes, but it's not a fun situation. So make sure you're wearing the appropriate PPE, throw some earplugs in to save yourself some hearing. Also we're gonna throw on some arms here so I don't burn up my arms. Got a 
pair of gloves, and we'll go ahead and get this line cut. That should be all of our plate that we need. So now I'm gonna probably just hit that with a wire wheel, clean up the rust on it, and we'll go ahead and start fitting our pieces together. One thing I've decided to do is put a slope at the bottom of my tank. So I'll have a half inch higher on one side and then down to nothing on this side. And I'll put my drain on this low side. That way when I go to drain out my acetone, it'll all easily flow down to one, to one end where it all will drain out. Okay, we got our second piece lined up. We're going to go ahead and start uh, tacking it down as we go. We got both of our sides tacked together. So now we're going to go ahead and put the ends on. Before we tack on the end on the low side, I think I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole for my drain. That way I don't have to deal with uh, trying to drill it and clean the hole up afterwards. So as you can see, that hole is pretty well perfectly flush with the bottom of our Tank. So there's our tank. I think it's going to work pretty well. The sides do have a little bit of flex in them and I think when we fill it with liquid they may flex out a little bit making our lid fit a little too tight so we'll probably run some of that angle around the box just to tighten that up. We're going to go ahead and get this box seal welded so we can uh, start continuing on. Well, we've got it seal welded out. They're not the most, they're not the prettiest welds, but all we need is to have these welds hold liquid, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to get our, our um, 3 8 threaded nipple cut and we'll get it welded on. We'll go ahead and thread the valve on and put some water in it and make sure we're, we're not leaking. As you can see, we got no leaks there, no leaks underneath. Don't look at that weld. We got no leaks here. So I'd say this is in good shape. So I think what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of cleanup on the edge, especially that bottom edge where the taper was. It had, the, it's got a few of these little, little hangers that you can cut yourself on. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean those up. Probably dress up that ugly ass weld over there clean some things up and we'll get this uh, ready now one thing we did talk about is whether or not we needed to do anything here um, it doesn't really appear that the size has changed any it did pick up a little bit of warping when I did the welding so it, it may be worth it to put that angle iron on there just to straighten that edge back out. So with that, when we trim this out with angle, I decided to set it on here like this with that toe towards the inside. It'll give it just a little bit of a lip on the inside there. It'll, and so what I'm thinking there is when I open and close the drawer, <clears throat> If I do have any sloshing, that little bit of a lip there will help keep it from wanting to wash over and, and drip out. I think this is gonna serve a, serve a good purpose. It's gonna pull this edge on the side nice and straight. And at the same time, I'll be able to get this top edge nice and flat and straight. So when I put my lid on, it's gonna have a pretty good seal all the way around.
right, now that we got this frame put together, we're gonna set our tank down. That looks like a good fit. As you can see, it rocks a little bit because we did pick up a little bit of warping uh, when we welded it. There, we got it even on both ends, so I'm gonna attack the four corners, and then we can go through and work the sides. Okay, I'm using my level here just to ensure that this is nice and flat. As I said, I'm using it as a straight edge, and that is about as flat as I can ever get it, so happy with that. We can just go through and get this tacked on. one side done we'll go ahead and flip it over and we'll get the other side clamped up just like we did this and weld it out it's nice and flat and straight it'll be good now we can start building the lid so we cut our pieces for our lid the same as we did for our top frame there so these when we get this, I, I built it about a 16th oversize all the way around. So I have a little bit of a gap. That should work out pretty good for taking it on and off and for sealing in the base. So we're gonna tack this up and square it up just like we did that upper frame. There, we got our piece of plate set inside there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it over and we're going to measure and make sure that the sides are straight and we'll start tacking this together from the top. So I got this old piece of channel that I've had laying around and I think I can use that so if I run that channel across here and then I'll be able to weld or weld nuts on the back side so I can bolt this off. So I'm going to set this about two and a half inches down that way we'll have roughly an inch between the, the bottom of our table and the top of our tank. Well, there we go. That should work out good. Only thing we gotta do now is we'll put the other one on and then we'll measure the distance and make sure they stay true with each other. Because if they are running a little bit crooked, that's gonna cause us some problems. So let's pull it right here where it's got a little bit more support again 51 and a 16th of strength that's 51 and a heavy 16th we can measure them here in the front and 51 and a 16th so I'm pretty pleased with that I don't think there'll be any issues with those roller tracks going so I think the next thing to do, we go over here to our table. And now that we know what our spacing is, I'm gonna run a two by four across in, in both locations. So then I can just run a piece of angle down, lagged into the two by four. And then we can also just run a couple of screws over into our, uh, into our roller track. And I think that's gonna work out super slick. All right, we got our angles mounted. This one here will mount to the face of our two by four. And this one here will mount along the side of this, this guy here. And we 
got the same thing going on here on this other end. Just got these set into place. And we'll go get this lifted up underneath there and we'll screw it in and see what see what we got to do to adjust it. I'm gonna, I'm, what I've decided to do is I'm going to thread this on when I go to use it. That way it's not hanging down and in the way of anything else um, that I may have on the shelves. So we'll go ahead and I'll thread this onto my tank. I know this might be easier with two people, but we only got one out here right now. So we're gonna give this the best shot we can. I'm gonna hold it up there and shoot a screw in on one end on each side. And then I can then determine if I need to adjust it any uh, to, keep it, to keep it level with the table. So. Well, we got this working. Seems like that's gonna work pretty good. I just gotta finish adjusting it, get it leveled, get the rollers leveled out, and get the rest of the screws in, and then we'll be able to test this thing out. All right, guys, I think we can say out with the old and in with the new. Check this out. Let's go ahead and pour some acetone in and Doesn't seem to want to slosh too much when I open and close. Lid fits on nice. Tucks away neat. I gotta say, that is a big improvement. I might end up putting a hinge on that. Cause that would work out really slick with a hinge. Probably put a hinge on it and a couple of little fold down handles so I can open and close this real easy. I'll probably hook the handles right there on the lid so I can also use those to open and close it. Well, as you can see, I think we have another completed project here in the Alaskan Man Cave. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know it was a fun project for me. Didn't take that long to build this thing, so um, and I think it's going to work out great. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.